All right, so this is gonna be a ZZCT method theory video. I wanna talk about two or three different topics, so let's get started. So the first thing is I'd like to introduce to you the idea of the fundamental or foundational TTLL, and that is according to the ZMS TTLL sheet or ZZ method server TTL solvers server T TTLL sheet. Anyways, it's this case, it's a double bar case, it's this solved case <clears throat> where this corner and this corner swaps and these two edges swap, the UL and UB edges. It's a fantastic case because it's fast, it's, it's kind of awkward to sell, do stuff behind the camera. But anyways, yeah, this is the foundational case because from this one case, this one TTLL, you can generate all the other TTLLs using PLL as well. So let me explain. So every TTLL has two-sided PLL recognition because all the TTLLs have this five-piece line here preserved. <clears throat> as such, we can deduce that this is correct. So if we know these pieces are solved and we have PLL recognition here, and then we have another set of corner swapping here, then there must be another ed set of edges swapping. And if we know our F2L is solved, then and these two edges are correct, then that means these two edges also have to be swapped in the back. Thus we can deduce and prove, of course, that this is the underlying TTLL for every case. Of course, there's other ways you can do it. You can prove it rigorously by generating all the TTLs using this case, and I'll show an example of that in just a moment. But the point is, is this is the fundamental case, or what I call the fundamental or foundational TTL, because you can use this one TT apply this TTL to every PLL from all four possible AUS. Um, and it will generate all of the other TTL algs or cases. However, you might know that that's going to create issues because there are 21 PLLs plus the solved case. So four AUFs times 22 cases gives 88 possible cases mathematically. But there are 72 TTLOs. So what's up with that? Well, it's because of rotational symmetry. Um, so if I grab the solved cube here and I apply it, this is the exact same like TTLO case, but it's from a different AUF. So stuff like that. So we can remove three cases from solved, three cases for the H perm, six cases for the two N perms, two for Z perm, and two for E perm because of their rotational symmetries. And when you add those together, you will be able to subtract an amount that will give you the total 72 cases. So, now that we've proven, and I've proven and shown that this generates all the other TTLs, let's see an example. So I'll grab a cube here. So here I'll just do a Z perm, or a Z perm for all you UK boys. Um, so obviously these two edges are swapping, and these two edges in the back are swapping. So if we apply this AUG, we should get a case where these two corners need to swap these two edges need to swap, and instead in the back here, these two edges will be solved. So, when I apply that case, you can see from the Z-perm, this five-piece block got preserved, of course, so these two edges need to swap. These two corners need to swap, and if we do a Y2, you can see now these two edges are solved because they got flipped. So that's that. So this is cool to know just from the theory perspective and to understand like what's going on under the hood, so to speak, as far as what the actual TTLO cases are. But we can also use this knowledge now to improve our recognition skills from different angles or AUS for TTLO and a few other cool things. So we'll talk about that here in a moment. So let's start talking about <clears throat> the second topic. And that is TTLO recognition from any AUF. 
So for this, the D layer corner or the last layer corner that's in the D layer has, should stay in the uh, standard DFR position. And so we will then use patterns from this last layer corner here in the D layer and the last layer corners you can see in the U layer to determine your CP case. So here, this is a double bar. Um, let me just set up a few cases. Okay, so here are a few different cases. Ignore, this is a standard boat purple instead of orange. Um, so here we have double bar, double op, front op. A few different cases. So let's say I do a U2. Let's say you're solving and you get the U2 angle. You can learn to recognize the patterns between the corners for any AUF though, and will produce unique patterns. So here for double bar, for example, I know these stickers match and these stickers match from the U2 angle. For a double opposite, these two are opposites, these two are opposites front ops on and so forth, these match, these are opposites, that kind of thing. And you can recognize patterns as well. These match, these are opposites, these are opposites from this angle, all that sort of stuff. There is a document for this, and I'll try to remember to link it in the description if you want to check out the CP recognition. It's not too bad. Um, so that's how you can recognize CP. And that's going to be the first step of recognizing your TTLL from any AUF. And then step two is recognizing the full case. And this gets a little more difficult, but there's two kind of approaches you can do with it. Although I think one is the better way. And so let's talk about it. You can either learn what the four TTLLs look like from all four different AUFs, which isn't that bad, especially if you use the uh, theory from the foundational TTL, or you can use that foundational TTL knowledge um, about which edges need to swap and what corners need to swap and mentally form the two-sided PLL recognition. So um, I set this up on a bad cube because people don't want to see stuff on weird color schemes. They want to see it on what they know. So, oop, bumped it to the end. So here I'm going to set up the same TTLO case. So this is solved with super soon. It's the same case as you can see. However, so let's just check out the U2 angle. For, as an example, so that way it's comprehensive, or that way I don't, I'm not going to be super comprehensive. If you want to learn how to do this, you can. This is going to show you the ideas behind it. So there are two ways you can go about this. Also, I need to set up an L on another cube to have ready. Keep it out of frame. All right, so there's two ways you can go about it. The first is what I know and I'm using at the moment, and that is to just recognize the... Um, the different patterns across each AUF. And so, for example, I can know that I have this super soon case, which you execute from this U2 angle, because I recognize these two are opposites. This is another set of opposites that are the same color. And this edge matches this corner, and this corner matches this corner color. So these three are the same color. These are opposites, these are opposites. That's enough information for me to recognize the CP and the uh, exact case. So, but if you didn't know this information, you would have to you two recognize that it's the super soon case and then execute it. The other way is using now let me set the case up again. Using the knowledge we have about the fundamental TTL case that these two corners swap and these two edges swap. And so here, let's look at this 
we know these two corners are what we want to swap and these two edges swap so let's look at what happens um I need to set something up from a different angle. Oops, on this other cube. All right, now we're good. So let's swap these two edges. The, the edges swap around the F2O corner. So these two edges will swap. So we'll have orange, orange, and red, red. And then we need to mentally swap these two corners. And from this, from the U2 angle, these two corners, these two stickers swap, and these two stickers swap. So mentally we see orange, orange orange so a orange line and then blue and then red red and so if we look at what that looks like here it's the same thing as this j a perm orange 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 red blue red red so if i do u2 apply the fundamental ttlo and then u2 again we can confirm that is the case so we can use the fundamental ttlo knowledge to use two-sided PLO recognition as well, as long as we have this, um, the right corner here. But it's a lot. I don't know how viable this is, but it's a way you can do it. I am personally going about just learning AUF recognition and using that trick as needed to help supplement that information I don't know if it's a good idea to use it as far as um, the primary way you would recognize your TTLO from a different angle. That being said, you'll probably want to learn to do both and use them in combination because they'll boost each other in recognition and that will help your recognition and your recognition speed. However, there's more. You might have noticed, of course, this only works for your AUF and ADF. So we're gonna fix that so that way we can recognize the TTLO case from any AUF, ADF, or combination of them. But in order to do that, we have to use the optimal ZZCT process. And uh, nobody does that as far as we are aware. I'm not gonna show um, what it would be like because I'm not good like that. Well, I'll try. This is, um, I'll use that same case, but this is going to be on the fly. So let's say, so basically, Okay, we'll use that as an example. So basically, the optimal ZZCT process. You're going to want to solve your EO cross and have a good F2L minus one without any uh, particular slot priority. And then you're going to want to be able to do slot neutral, TSLE. However, this TSLE step is a step that needs a lot of optimization and it's going to be very important. So the first thing is you obviously want to be slot neutral TSLE. If you're not being slot neutral, you're not being optimal and that's kind of oof, but there's a lot more to it. So you don't want to just be able to be able to do your TSLE in any slot. You also want to be able to know when you do your TSLE, what case or sorry case what corner is going to end up getting solved in the slot with the f2l pair because that is going to one let you um predict what ttll you get you'll know if you're going to get p uh pll instead of ttl and it opens up the doors to recognizing um, TTLL from any angle as far as AUF, ADF, or combination of them. So let's use. So, here for this case, obviously, it's pretty obvious this is the corner that's going to go in the slot. Or 
or let me do it this way. It's pretty obvious this corner is going to go into the slot. So the blue orange corner, as such, when we do that, we can know um, a fair amount of information, even though we can't see it. So we know the orange blue corners in the back. We know then this orange corner here has to be the orange green corner. And these two corners in the back are either going to be the, and this has to be either the red green or the red blue. <sighs> now, we have to, so we imagine this corner here because you have to have a really good understanding, obviously, but this is the hypothetical, like optimal CT and stuff. But as such, we know, we would want to know, we inserted the blue orange corner and that orange is going to be on this left down back spot here. So if we did a D2 to bring it here, orange would be here. So we can then recognize these two are opposites, these two are opposites, this color, or this color, yeah, this color, this color, and this color, assuming it was here, if we do the D2 to see it. As such, we can recognize this is the super soon case. Um, even though we had a U2 and D2 AUF, ADF combo, for example. So that's the idea. I don't know how viable that is. I don't think it would be worth doing, particularly for speed all of the time, but I think it could be worth it to use to recognize cases um, that occur from different AUF ADFs combos, particularly from U2 angles. So that was just a neat little video. I don't think you want to technically do like the full on recognized TTLL from every angle possible. But I thought it'd be kind of neat to share the idea on how you can go about doing it. Um, even if it's not something, it's par something particularly necessary. So yeah, I hope this was kind of cool, kind of interesting ZZCT theory stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all I got for you for now. So hope this is cool.